All right, so we are back, uh, 2018 now, with uh, my friends and, and genius builders and designers, Claudio and Claudia Pagelli. And uh, first of all, we wanted to talk to you about this Luthier Beyond Limits um, project and booth. So uh, please tell us a little bit about that. Lucia Beyond Limits is a uh, blog. Uh, you know, my English is quite bad, so maybe we have to go around that. It's uh, we all like each other. The work since many years, they all all highly appreciated builders, and so we went together and we thought, okay, let's make a booth together, uh, just to celebrate ourselves and also have a big exposure like this because if you have just one boost by alone you easily overview it and like this we are six Lucius in a row and makes quite an impressive appearance yes. but actually we we'll just love the work of all the others and so what is the uh, the, the beyond limits uh, for people who are not necessarily familiar with your work or uh, Matsuda or, or Steve Klein or Alkie what does that beyond limits mean to you beyond limits means that we all build guitars that are quite out of the box thinking uh, design wise and construction wise not mainstream we are not mainstream all of these guys who are uh, showing their instruments they are yeah. yeah not mainstream advanced guitar makers and always they are always like that it's yeah. not that we just do one to be somehow out of the box with just the way we we, we are, are working yeah, yeah we are <laughs> yes. it's very easy to make one instrument who is different you know yes. one, but to 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 make your living out of it all your your that all your instruments are li like this it's a different thing then when i when i met you back in uh, i knew your work before we actually met but i was when I met you, you know, a couple of years ago at the Holy Grail Guitar Show, we saw, or I saw, so many things that you showed me that you made, like the bass, the gold bass, that you made in the 90s, I think, that became, inspired so many other builders, and that you, you're, you're an inspiration for, for so many uh, by creating techniques and designs that were just not ever made before, you know. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's difficult for you to talk about it, but when I was talking to Claudia about the design of, or the process of designing um, the Billy Gibbons guitar, you know, does it have a name, by the way? Kill Bill. The Kill Bill once, because he never responded to our call, so we called the guitar Kill Bill, you know, if you ah. don't take the calls now, <laughs> but now he, t he took it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the... Uh, the the design process behind uh, behind that guitar, because I think that's fascinating. Uh, the whole story? How we it's, a story. Uh, it's a long story. It's a long story. Okay, uh, Claudio met Billy once after a concert, and uh, he recognized because we had a how you say title site on the premier guitars, the front oh. page. We had the yeah. front page. And he already, he seen the, this magazine at the studio and he really loved the guitar. And then uh, they had a concert in Switzerland, so we get in contact and Claudio could show him the work. And next time when he was on tour, he just uh, called us to invite us to the concert. And we had a really nice time together. And we realized that he knows us better than we do. He knows everything I, I think you know each car a guitar and not just you know the blue one like he knew about details uh, it was incredible so um, on the end it, it was like uh, I would love to have a guitar from you guys so just do one for me and I'm, I'm wondering what's coming up next from your desk and yeah, if I like. That was the instruction. Just yes. tell me something. Uh, tell me some, I mean, it, it had to be light. Right. And he gave the measures of the neck. Right. Yeah. That's, That's it. That's it. That's it. So, and then, um, yeah, we we were we've been a bit lazy. We had some do some other work, and uh, 
One year later we met him and we did some drawing, but just outlines and uh, having some ideas. Uh, you know, it, it was hard to find out what he really wants from us. Is it a, a guitar for just hanging around at home? Just some, or, or, a or he wants to have a stage one or like this. And then he, he yeah, he just saw the outlines and he said like, wow, I prefer this way. So the outlines when you were, you were, you were telling me the story about the outlines of that guitar is that you, you drew it uh, on the on a 2D just a piece of paper yeah. yes. and then basically told Claudio like now you build it ah, <laughs> it wasn't that fast <laughs> but you know I, I I don't like to to draw in 3D uh -huh. because if, if you figure out all all the shapes from a guitar it's it's for me it's, it's getting dead because he, he can't he work. No more imagination. Yeah, he can't yeah. work with the wood. He can't get. I, I don't know I, how to in, say. I often often improvise when I, while I'm working, you know, on yeah, the instrument. Yeah, ah. yeah. And if you do all in 3D, there is no more room to improvise. Yeah. Then it's it's just execution and not creation. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he has to get the feeling for the guitar, you know, in in the process of building. Uh, yeah, you get more and more in touch and, and get a feeling to the guitar and you decide during uh, if we shape it hard or getting more round and what you feel, it's, it's a process. And so uh, you said that initially the, 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 the part that is now a hollow part on the guitar was more of a big guard when you, you designed that, that part and that Claudio is so yeah. something different? Yeah, yeah. On the paper it looks like a pick card, actually it was a pick card and I saw it always as a frame. And these are two completely different things, you know. And because he wanted a very light guitar, of course we took out, we, we, we use it as a frame because it makes it much lighter. And much harder to build. <laughs> and much harder to build, yeah. yes. Ten times harder. Especially finishing the inside part and, and that, that must have been quite a challenge. It, I guess we, we did the painting job three or four times. It really hard. It's it's hard for people to understand um, the level of energy that there is going between you two, and uh, it's such an amazing and such a beautiful thing that your your creative process and when you when you build instruments in general because not only this one because this one is just as amazing as all the other instruments that you build um, do you always ba bounce back and forth like that and keep that creative process yeah yeah on yes. every instrument and from scratch to the end it has to yeah you know we 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 say that she, cloud is making the design i'm in the dust but it also melts together she works also in the shop and i'm working on the designs it's from 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 the real from the very very beginning to the very end, it's always a, a communication. How would you do that? Uh, how you see that? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there are many things you can't design already in the beginning. Yeah. Sometimes it, it's just changing the color. We thought about the green guitar, and in the end, it's red because it it figured out it's better if we just make it in red or, or the knobs or the head. It's yeah. It's. But don't you think that that you know, which goes really well with the beyond limits, is that you don't limit yourself with 3D or no. with CAD or with anything. So there's really no limit. Like you were telling me when you were, you thought, oh, I want to design this base. Why does the fretboard always stops there? And you went all the way, yeah. and then he has to figure out how to make that work. You know, that's that's the the, the great thing on that base because. That thing about that went through until to the end. That's yes. the, this was an innovation that never existed. Never. And I Im immediately have seen, oh, that is the perfect fretless bass. Yes. We never wanted to have that bass with frets on it or whatever. Just sound-wise, with the with the neck is going through, the fingerboard is going through, with the nearly unlimited access. This this was the perfect fretless bass. 
and then we started to also we we thought okay when we do the perfect fretless bass so let's take out the, the knobs who are killing always some part of the sound and it, it and every uh, tuning device would would disturb the whole thing so we put we we uh, invented to to do it on the back side you know it, something like this never never existed and like now it's a sculpture somehow yes and to, to keep the purity of the lines exactly. and, and exactly. nothing interrupts it. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's about the purity of the lines and the purity of the sound. Right. So fantastic. I mean, we could do this for hours, but I wanted you to uh, answer a question that I've asked every single person. And the first question, there's three. So the first one is, if there is one shape or one object that you could pick that has influenced you the most in your in your career, what would it be? <laughs> One object. One object or a shape. It could also be of, of guitars. Of anything. Of anything. It could be anything in the universe. Ah, of anything. Uh, the, the, body nature, of the nature, the nature, ah, yeah, 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 the body, yeah, of our bodies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the one. <laughs> Sorry. But yes, that's very, that's very interesting. So the curve and the, and the human body, basically. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and how it changed over the years, you know. <laughs> Specifically, uh, some points that we cannot make. But yes. that would be the that would be the the, the, the part for you. Yeah, so, I, I could not, I could not choose one object to, to be to be. Uh, I know uh, that's why I made that question because then people say I cannot choose one and then you talk about several. So feel free to yeah. talk about different ones. <laughs> In general, nature. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You draw a lot of inspiration from the human body, shapes in nature. Yeah. Yeah. Just everything that inspires you. Just have open eyes. Everything yeah. can, it's yeah, it's all over, wow. uh, everywhere. You know, it's it's. And that, that is such you know, we are not searching for it. Yes. We're not going around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We need right. a new. It's it's. You absorb it, and then yes. it comes back out. Yeah, 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 yeah. The second question that we have is if you can pick one sound or one noise or that you really don't like. Uh, and it could be anything from a sound in nature, a sound artificial. I don't that like. That you don't like. Beside my was the table. When you write on on a uh, this chalkboard, yeah, yes. this white uh, yes. thing. Yes. It hurts me in a way. Yeah, it makes you cringe. Uh, and you, Claudio? I don't like the noise of 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 uh, cars and streets and stuff oh, yeah. like this. The, the noise of the city? Yeah. In a city when there is always noise I have no problem but I don't like it when it's somewhere quiet and Altogether. then there is someone with a heavy car or yeah. something, I don't know. Interesting. And then the last question is a sound that uh, you do like, that, that you love or that, that really puts you in a good place uh, emotionally. When it's raining on the roof. Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. Yeah. You, you hear the rain on the roof? Yeah, yeah. I like the sound of silence. The sound of silence? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like it. But Especially uh, after now. One problem is that when, when there is a sound of silence, I hear my ear ring, ear ringing. Yes. So that's also a sound I really don't like. Ah, uh, that's a sound, yeah. But, but yes, when it's raining, that's... We, we also have a caravan, and when it's raining, it's, it's one of the yeah, nicest sounds. <laughs> yeah. Rain on it's the roof. Relaxing. Uh -huh. Yeah, like a soothing, relaxing sound. Well, is there anything else you want to add um, about anything, any projects, the show, anything you feel like you want to add? No, actually, no. no. Just thank no. you to Very you. good questions, and there's nothing to add. Well, thank you so much, my friends. It's always such a pleasure to see you. Are you going to be at the Holy Grail this year? No. Nope. No, maybe as 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 helping hands but we are not yeah. sure yet because we attended three times and then you step out for, right. a, for a year but maybe we go there and take some holidays and help but we are not sure yet it depends on on the on work, some, on we, the have, work we, yes. have. we have some project all right well to to for people to follow you know 
the Pajeli's work, um, all the good links that we have here, social media, website, and all that. And um, if you ever have the, the opportunity to meet them and to meet their instruments, you have to, because as far as human beings and are concerned, you have to meet them and touch them and, and, and touch their instruments and, 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 and experience it for yourself. Yeah, and don't go too close to them after a show like this because... <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much.